Saturday, May 4th, everyone. Hunter here at Weather on the Go. And in today's weather forecast, we're going to be going over your summer 2024 outlook, including as we in transition from ENSO neutral conditions to La Nina in 2024 summer. And we're also going to take a look at your temperature, precipitation, and severe weather forecasts in today's video, followed by what promises to be a very active hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin. And the front end of the hurricane season is June, July, and August. We'll take a look at that as well in today's video. So if you are new here to the channel, press the subscribe button down below and you have the latest weather forecast updates right here at Weather on the Go, right at your fingertips always. Also make sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below. It helps out more than you know. So let's look here at our sea surface temperature anomaly out here into the equatorial Pacific Ocean. And these are sea surface temperature anomalies as of yesterday and you can see we do have a big blue blob starting to develop here with our cooler water temperatures surfacing across the equatorial Pacific. This is the start of our developing La Nina, and you can see the El Nino is fading, and it has faded. We are in ENSO neutral conditions as we see plus 0.409, and that actually means ENSO neutral because minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 in that range is where ENSO neutral is expected. Expected. And then as we go beyond or like lower than 0 point, negative 0 0.5, that is La Nina. That's what we'd be transitioning into as we go into the summer here of 2024. So let's look at the latest outlook here from the Climate Prediction Center. This was as of April, and you can see we are into ENSO neutral conditions here as of June. And you can see that has a 70 plus percent chance of occurring. And then you see La Nina developing as soon as July. July here up to a 60% chance of La Nina in July up to a 72% chance there in August and then beyond into the fall months as well. So let's now look here at your 500 millibar height anomalies for June and basically what this shows is wherever you see this donut hole here, that's a ridge of high pressure down in New Mexico and nosing its way into the Southern Plains into New Mexico and Texas. And what this means is that we're gonna have a lot of warm air across the Southern US. You see the blues up here into Canada, that is Northwest flow. That is cooler air in the blue up to the North here. So what this means is our temperature forecast for June of 2024 goes as follows. And you can see the key, the map key on the left-hand side side of your screen. If you live in the West or especially the South here, you're going to be seeing above normal temperatures, most likely in June, especially in this orange shaded color. That's where I expect well above normal temperatures from the Four Corners region, parts of the Pacific Southwest through Texas Hill Country here in the Rio Grande Valley and near the Gulf Coast there into Dixie Alley. I do expect those areas well above normal with our temperatures in June. Normal conditions here in the white across most of the plains getting into the Midwest, the Ohio Valley up into New England and the Northeast, and then below normal temperatures up here into portions of the upper Midwest and upper Great Lakes region. We showed you those blue anomalies up into Canada. I think that could spill into the upper Midwest here, at least parts of the upper Midwest and the upper Great Lakes region there in June. Now our precipitation forecast in June here, we do see some drier conditions out West across the Rockies, but especially down here into areas with traditional monsoons. I think the monsoon will actually come on later this year. And you can see the Four Corners region of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico, and even parts Parts of West Texas as well will be seeing well below normal precipitation this June. You can see out east though, active jet stream could be setting up from the Midwest, the Ohio Valley into the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic states, well above normal precipitation in parts of these areas, especially the lower Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley there into the Carolinas and towards the Del Marva. We'll keep a close eye on that for June. Now going into July here, you can see some cooler anomalies for the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada. The ridge starts to build more across the south, but also the eastern U.S. here as well. 
So that means our temperature forecast will start to trend that way as well into July. So you can see a warmer pocket down here across the Pacific Southwest and the Southern Plains, but a secondary pocket of well above normal temperatures up near the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and interior New England. That's where we expect those well above normal temperatures into July there, possibly even some triple digit heat and some heat waves. And then across the Pacific Northwest, normal high temperatures for the most part. We could have a few above normal days, a few below normal days, but overall when you average out all of the days in July, it should end up rather close to normal across the Pacific Northwest and the Northwestern Plains. Looking at the precipitation forecast for July of 2024, very dry out west folks. That will continue into the Rockies, into not only the Four Corners regions, but up here into the Pacific Northwest as well. Pretty normal precipitation for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes region into the Northeast New England. Down into the South East, parts of the Ohio and Tennessee River Valley there and parts of the Mid-Atlantic will be seeing wetter than normal conditions. We'll be seeing above normal precipitation in July. This could come with some tropical activity, especially near the Carolina coast or the Florida Peninsula as well. We'll have to keep an eye on that going into July. Now going into August, you can see that ridge of high pressure kind of meandering. It was in July a little further east down here into the southern plains. It may meander further west into the Four Corners region with that central high pressure as we go into August. That just means it's kind of an extension of July. So we're going to see a lot of the same areas seeing the same type of heat. Another pocket again across the west in the Pacific Southwest stretching over into the southern plains and then a secondary pocket of more potent heat across parts of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, down down here to the southeast, but also up into interior New England. And you can see most of the country generally above normal with their temperatures in August. Near normal up here into the high plains and parts of the upper Midwest. We'll keep an eye on that. Again, some areas could be seeing some cooler weather, some warmer weather. We'll keep an eye on that. Precipitation forecast for August. Pretty dry out here actually into the Four Corners region, mainly the eastern Four Corners region, Colorado into New Mexico. Starting to dry out a lot more in the central and southern plains and then stretching over here towards the Ohio Tennessee River Valley, especially the second half of August. And it's wetter down here, the southeast coast from the Gulf Coast up through portions of the Atlantic coast here of the Carolinas and Virginia, even the Florida Peninsula above normal precipitation there in August. This will come with potential tropical impacts as well. Now let's look at the U.S. seasonal drought outlook. This goes all the way through July 31st, so I know it doesn't take up all of August. August here. But just through July 31st, most of the summer, you can see we're going to chip away at the drought here across the Midwest and parts of the Central Plains. We've already done so, so far in May. I think we'll continue to do so as we go into June, July as well. So we're going to see a drought improvement and even some drought erasing as well across this region. Out West though, we did show you the prospects for drier weather. That will actually lead to more significant drought development across not only the Pacific Northwest, but parts of the Four Corners regions and the Rockies as well, and more drought development in West Texas. So do uh, you know we are keeping a close eye on that. So do expect that as we go into the summer. Now severe weather forecast here. Here's severe weather climatology for June. We still see the bullseye there in the Central Plains and then uh, secondary areas across the Ohio Valley and the Southeast in June. We see that mainly start to migrate further north into July. We start to see more wind events and hail events uh, versus tornado outbreaks in July typically, climatologically speaking, and uh, you can see some hot spots here into the central and northern plains, but also the eastern Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, and then especially down here into the Carolinas in July. And then August, we start to cool off, uh, so to speak, with our severe weather outbreaks. And again, more of wind storms versus tornado outbreaks in August, um, but you can see more of those values are higher into the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and towards the east, so we'll keep a close eye on that. This summer, from June 1st through August, I do think we are going to see some pretty active severe weather, especially the first half of summer. I think for most of June and the first half or so of July, I do think we'll be rather active this summer, kind of an extension of the late spring 
spring severe weather and especially in this orange and even the red shaded color I expect well above normal events of severe weather from June July and even into August at times and like I said the first half of summer June and then half of July should be pretty active the second half of July and August we should see still some severe weather events but not as frequent and you can see in this red shaded color I did note up here greatest chance for a derecho in the red from parts of the Midwest down into the Ohio Tennessee River Valley and parts of the southeast so we'll keep a close eye on that that's on the outer periphery of that ridge as it builds out from Mexico into Texas and the southern plains and deep south the northern northeastern periphery of that is where you look for a belt of westerlies in the jet stream and that's basically just fancy talk for a strong jet stream and that could lead to intense lines of storms that's what a derecho is is a fast moving intense thunderstorm complex that produces widespread wind damage sometimes over 100 miles per hour so we'll be keeping a close eye on that now concerning the hurricane season a lot of talk on this as well it's going to be a very active season folks things are setting up to be very active maybe not record setting all so to speak um, or maybe we will have to wait and see but we see some very warm temperature anomalies out here already just from May 3rd across the Caribbean across the main development region the MDR and the Gulf of Mexico is warming up it's a little bit cooler out here in the western Atlantic Basin right now but that should be warming up as well looking at the North Atlantic hurricane and tropical storm activity this is kind of climatology for when to expect the tropical activity to start picking up in the North Atlantic Basin and it really starts to pick up there as we go into later July but also August here toward the end of summer so we'll keep a close eye on that here's more climatology month by month so for June we're kind of keeping an eye on those cold fronts if we see fronts moving across the southeast US and kind of getting hung up near the southeast coast that could lead to more tropical storms and tropical depressions or even hurricanes into June near the Gulf Coast and portions of the Carolina coast and even over Florida will watch that going into July we could still see that but it's mainly the western Atlantic Basin favorable for that as well into July and then August yeah things get very busy in August climatologically in the main development region and up into the western Atlantic but I think this year in August it's going to be a little bit different so let's look back here at the very busy hurricane season of 2020 and you can see all of the tracks of the hurricanes in that year and you can see a lot of them made their way west into the Caribbean but especially the Gulf folks and I actually f uh, think that this season this hurricane season in 2024 will be a similar to 2020 in some regards maybe not to as many hurricanes per se but possibly the track of where they go into the Caribbean and the Gulf so let's look here at pressure anomalies for June you can see a very strong high pressure up here into the Northeast Atlantic Ocean and that will be a steering current for these storms underneath of that into the Caribbean and eventually the Gulf there. And you can see that here on the precipitation anomalies in the main development region as those tropical waves come off Africa, they make their way into the Caribbean and then eventually into the Gulf. I think the Yucatan could be very busy into June. And then as we go into July, it starts to strengthen a little bit more. So the steering current again through the Caribbean into the Gulf and very far Western Atlantic, dangerously close to the United States. And I do think that July could be a big month again for the Caribbean and perhaps most of the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll have to be watching out for our friends near the Gulf Coast and the Southeast Coast there, including the Carolina Coast for July. Now, August, high pressure system weakens just a tad, but that's going to open up a lot more areas of potential here in August for the main development region. This could go into the Caribbean here is a pretty good hot spot toward the Bermudas as well into the southwestern Atlantic Basin or even near the Yucatan. We'll have to keep a close eye on that as we go closer into August of 2024. It's going to be a very busy hurricane season likely in 2024. And when you average all of the three month pressure anomalies from June, 2024 through August 2024 out you can see it's going to be very strong we're going to have a strong high pressure up here for most of those months for the first half of the hurricane season and that will lead to a storm track further south leading these systems into the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean and you can see that here with our precipitation anomaly for June July and August from the main development region into the Caribbean then eventually into the Yucatan and also the Gulf but also the southwestern Atlantic as well well, could be another hot spot
lot, as especially as we get closer to August time frame. So a lot of information here in today's video. I hope you liked it. Give it a subscribe to my channel. Give it a like as well down below. I definitely appreciate that. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Saturday out there.